What's up guys, Duke's Loth here and these are the patch notes for patch 3.10 Dwarven Corruption, the release patch of Fafnir. We're taking a look at his cards first, they're glitched here so we're looking at them on Twitter. This is his default card and this is his recolor card as far as I'm concerned. Now, looking at his abilities, most of them are like they were in the Smite data mining that happened before. So not too much has changed. We unfortunately don't have all the numbers in the patch notes for some reason, but we're going to th go through them regardless and give you an appropriate, like, approximate idea of how they roughly will be. So passive is Endless Greed. Fafnir gains 4 bonus gold from all minions, structures, kills and assists. From everything all the time, even if you get Watcher's Gift on top of that. Fafnir also gains bonus protections based on the amount of gold he's currently holding. This, as far as I know, still goes up to 1000 gold and is up to 30 protections. For the abilities, you always have the normal ability and the dragon form. I'm gonna go through the normal first and then the dragon form. Curse Strength. Fafnir holds his hammer forward, dealing damage to enemies in its path. If Fafnir hits a guard, the hammer stops and stuns them for one second. The stun god also radiates out a cursed pulse, slowing them and nearby enemies for three seconds. Careers. Fafnir curses his allies into fighting harder, boosting their power and attack speed for five seconds and healing himself. I think the heal goes up to 200 unless that's changed after the data mining. Underhand Tactics, Fafnir leaps to a target location and executes a despicable strike, dealing damage and disarming enemies in front of him, exactly like it was data mined. Um, as for the Cursed Strength, apparently the damage goes up to 300, but I'm not 100% sure about this. Then we got Dragonic Corruption or Reversion. Fafnir transforms into a terrifying dragon and is untargetable during the process. When he emerges in dragon form, nearby enemies are poisoned, taking damage for every second for 3 seconds. He remains in this form for a duration um, or until the ability is activated again. As a dragon, his abilities have additional effects and his basic attack changes to a Dragon Breath that deals damage 3 times per second. Dragon Breath cannot proc item hit effects. However, Dragon Breath is slightly AoE. You have to imagine it like a smaller Ares Flame. So it's a lot of, of AoE damage coming through just from the basics. Additionally, his abilities change, so we have Corrosive Acid now. In Dragon Form, this ability deals increased damage and ticks every th second for 3 seconds. Also, the Cursed Pulse shreds protections in addition to slowing. Horrifying Gaze. In Dragon Form, this ability has a large area effect and can buff multiple allies. Deadly Bite. In Dragon Form, Fefni can leap much further. Also, this ability deals increased damage that ticks every second for 3 seconds. And Fafnir stuns the enemy closest to him for 2 seconds in addition to disarming. This is a lot, and it's pretty crazy. This guy has so much CC, but most of it is single target. So you've got the hammer, which stuns. You have the slow from the hammer, which is AoE. You have the stun in the dragon form, which also still works and shreds protections on top of that. And you have the disarm on the three, which is also a leap that goes through walls, so basically buckles level escape. And you have the stun for two seconds, which is pretty long, on top of that in the dragon form. So, yeah, you have a self, self or ally buff on top of that, that also heals you. And you have that AoE damage when you're turning into a dragon. And uh, I don't know what else you have, but you have a lot. It, the design is really freaking cool. But I have a feeling this guy is going to be really, really scary when we first see him, because he has so much in his kit. And... Especially the AoE auto attacks cannot be underestimated. Like I said, it's basically Ares' ability just as an auto attack for the whole time during his ult. His ult is not short, it's up to 40 seconds uh, with a decent cooldown. But And the cooldown doesn't start uh, until the dragon form runs out, so you have to be in dwarf form for a while. But you can still run around in dragon form quite often and you're gonna be scary if you do. And additionally, all your cooldowns get reset if you go into dragon form, so you can... Jump on someone, disarm them, then stun them, then ult them, make them take dot damage, then stun them again and stun them again. Obviously you have diminishing returns, but you still have a lot of stuns. Uh, I have a feeling that the, the, this cooldown reset might actually be removed sooner or later, just, just a little thought on the side, because it might be too strong. Alright, moving on to the skins. I have those open already, so we're gonna go over straight to Aphrodite, amazing skin. So this is a highly community requested skin in the first place. Also, when you use your broom, you throw cats, which is dope as hell. And they splat on the walls when they fly there, so that's pretty funny. And all her abilities look really cool. I did not think I would like the skin that much because the design itself is like, yeah, okay. 
but the abilities and all that friggin amazing and same goes for the scotty skin scotty ski patrol which has a well i don't even know what that dog is called in english but it has a dog it has an amazing dog the dog icon is on the enemy if you use it on them uh all that stuff like i said or as you know from my patch notes, I usually go more into balance and stuff, but these skins, this patch, are worth mentioning. They're really freaking cool. Uh, abilities aren't changed too much, but that's... The dog is enough. And then we got Raven, who is now Papa Smurf, and I will never speak of this skin again, because I'm not gonna use it, ever. And we got the Sobek Take Tour, which is actually pretty cool. I like that a lot. Uh, cool design. That's appropriate for a T2, I think. Really cool. And now we're moving back to the patch notes, and we're moving down to the actual balance, because there's achievements for Aphrodite and Nox and Red Oscar, and no one really cares about those. A little fix for whispers and to separate uh, description, so whatever. Item changes. The whole health item tree, all of them get a health increase from 350 to 400. Nice, good addition. Not sure if it's gonna do much. The items like Bulwark of Hope, it's more that Bulwark of Hope needs a nerf than that these items need a buff all too much. They need a buff, but as long as you have an item with magical defense and health and a shield, why would you just get a health item? Situationally, better than before, still not great. And that goes for most of the god changes as well, actually. AMC Hive, cooldown reduc uh, cool reduced from 16 to 14 seconds. That's okay, it's cool, but it's nothing major. Uh, not gonna change its place in any way. Uh, fixed to Artemis. Herbois, Water Spout, Mana Cost reduced quite drastically, not that much early on, but on, on later levels, uh, which is good because it's mostly his early uh, aggression tool, so that's pretty cool. Not gonna make him OP or anything, it's just gonna, you know, make life a little more convenient for him. Slipstream gets a reduced cooldown when leveling. Given that it's usually level last, it's not too impactful, but it's nice to give him a little more escape potential. Red Tusker, those are the relevant nerfs. Dart. Dart gets a uh, base damage reduction for like 20 across all ranks, uh, which is especially relevant early on. If it's maxed out, it's not so much, but it's a, it's something, it's something. Uh, also remember that you got a hotfix just now, which reduced the, the stun uh, cooldown, uh, increased the stun cooldown from 10 seconds to 15 seconds. And uh, then we have a flurry cooldown increased from 12 seconds to 14 seconds. So you, it's unlikely that you use it twice in a fight, I think. So that's pretty good. And the protection shred is reduced, and this was very necessary. I think it just went up too far. So 4% at max per tick now, which is much better. Then, uh, probably my favorite nerf this patch, uh, Regent's Thunder Crash was touched. The lightning, lightning damage reduced to maximum of 40, and the Thunder damage, which is the landing damage, reduced to a maximum of 80. I wish the scalings would have been touched, because they are the real threat, but I'm happy that the base damage now are touched, and they are quite... Quite significantly touched. Before it was 180 damage, now it's 120 damage, so that makes a difference. It's not gonna be like him jumping on you all that hard anymore. And last but not least, we have Susano getting some... Not huge nerfs, but well-placed nerfs. Scaling on the Storm Carter reduced from 90% to 80% on both hits. Little less. Good, good, good. Not, not crazy, but good. And what, what is more important, in my opinion, especially when you talk about mid Susanua and solo Susanua are just, like, out of control at the moment, no longer procs multiple item effects like Blue Stone Pendant more than once. That is a really good change, in my opinion. That is something that is really important, because before it was like, partially even worth to buy Blue Stone Pendant later on if you were jungling. So, yeah, that's gone now. That's out of the window. So, yeah, these are the patch notes. I'm really happy for Fen Fenrir. I'm really happy for Fenrir, yeah. Really happy for Fafnir. Uh, gonna jump on the PTS as soon as up. Thank you guys for watching. Duke's Loth, out. And le let me know what you think about them, as usual, obviously.